Muvlove Love is a story that means a lot to so many people. With its extremely high production value, fantastic, intricate world building, and lovable cast, it quickly rose to the favorites of many dedicated fans around the world. Those things, and many more, are also the reason I came to love Muvlove. Love. But even with all this depth and emotion, the main thing I find myself coming back to is the music. So, what exactly is a leitmotif? Well, let's ask Google. A recurrent theme throughout a musical or literary composition associated with a particular person, idea, or situation. So, going by that definition, that would mean that the leitmotif of Maya Mitsurugi is a certain reoccurring piece of music within the soundtrack overall. And wouldn't you know it, such a thing does exist, and I'm going to play it for you right now. And that little short segment is pretty much the entire thing. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Why does any of this matter at all? Well... It doesn't. I just think it's cool. Okay, I know that's a joke. I, I do think there's reasoning as to why this little melody is hidden amongst by um um <laughs> Sorry for the weird cut, but I am apparently incapable of saying the word amongst because of, I don't know, you probably know. And that side cut probably wasn't necessary either, and this is just adding on to it. Anyways, in these tracks. But before we get to these tracks... First, we have to talk about somebody else. You've probably heard of her. Yuhi Koubin and her theme of Noble Blood. There's something odd about that statement, though. Because of Noble Blood doesn't just play for Yuhi, it also plays for Maya. Before we get into that though, there's one big thing I want to bring up, and it's that Maya's lame motif is nowhere to be found in this song at all. So if Maya's lame motif doesn't show up in her own theme, then how is it her lame motif? Well, that's because Of Noble Blood isn't the theme for Maya in the beta verse. It's the theme for Maya in the extraverse. Now you may be thinking, doesn't it play for some scenes with Maya and Unlimited? And even in some an alternative? Yeah, but here's the kicker. Context. Context is what defines what this song means to a certain character or ideal. Of Noble Blood has a pretty self-explanatory purpose. It plays during scenes of characters with noble blood. So then it would make sense for it to play an extra for Maya because she's the heir to the Mitsurugi Financial Corporation or group or whatever. I don't know. It's group. So then wouldn't it make sense for it to play for Maya in the Betaverse as well? Kind of. Throughout Unlimited and Alternative, we learn of Maya's situation as a political hostage and body double for the Shogun, Yuhi. So in the eyes of most people, she isn't really technically supposed to be considered a person of noble blood. In fact, she isn't really even supposed to exist. So then why does it play for her in some scenes? 
well, it's because of their relation to the Shogun. But then, at that point, could we even really call it her theme? It would just make more sense to call it, say, the theme of the Shogunate. So, if it is the theme of the Shogunate, then why did I spend all this time talking about this? If it doesn't have the late motif, then what does it have to do with what I'm talking about? Well, it's a lack of the late motif that gives this song importance. By the end of chapter 6, Maya pretty much loses all of her importance as a political hostage because she revealed herself to be the body double of the Shogun. We see her status of someone with noble blood revoked, and it's reflected upon many, many times later in the story. Sure, she still acts pretty much the exact same, and is still technically somebody of noble blood. She isn't considered that anymore. And that's why I like that the late motif has seemingly no presence in that theme at all, because by the end of it, Maya has become her own individual person, supported by the people around her. And just like how the songs with the leitmotif in it do, this one also reflects events in the story and the development of characters. Speaking of songs with the leitmotif in it, let's go to the first one, Martial Law. And here is the clip. Now, what I find interesting is that if you were hearing this song for the first time, this little segment would seemingly have no effect on you. It'd just be a cool little part in the song, a cool little melody. But looking back on it, you realize why it was placed here, why it has a purpose here. This song plays when funny man I like high school girl Sagiri gives his speech declaring martial law. And as we see later on in the chapter, Maya is deeply connected with the coup d'etat, both in terms of her sympathy and understanding of the rebels, which we've seen from her previously, and her connection of, you know, being the sister of the Shogun, who is literally the center of all this conflict. This arc gives us a pretty dense look into Maya's core beliefs and current situation, so it's pretty damn fitting that her leitmotif is found in the song that, well, starts it all. And now the second appearance of the late motif, Orbital Descent, which I will now play a clip of. I'm damn sure that the most memorable thing from this scene the song plays in for everyone is Mr. Initial D Takahashi Ichimonji showing up again out of completely nowhere going down like the best. And for the longest time, I thought that was the reason her late motif was playing because, as we all remember from Extra, Takahashi is Maya's Shafur. I most definitely pronounced that wrong. But reflecting on that scene and the events that transpire in it, I started to realize that its presence there meant much more than I could ever imagine. Throughout nearly the entire VN, we see Maya's constant willingness to sacrifice herself, if need be, for something greater than her. And we see this especially in the coup d'etat arc, where we see her sh immediately ready to protect her s the sister, the Shogun. And during this scene, as we all know, Takahashi goes down and takes fire for the Susana to protect it from all the laser clash, you know, sh shooting at them. And following suit, all the other HSSTs go down with him, protecting the Susana and sacrificing themselves for a greater purpose. In the previous usage of the Le Motif, it was showcasing Maya's connections with the Shokunut and how that affects her greatly. And this time, it's instead used to show her beliefs and morals all in a physical form, that being the sacrifice of all the HSST squadrons for the Susano. And now on to the final song with the appearance of the lame motif, Maya.
This is actually where the example I use for the lint motif comes from. And that's because even though this is the last appearance of it, and this song is pretty much at the end of the VN, it's most definitely was composed before the previous songs, because otherwise it just wouldn't make sense for them to be there. All leitmotifs have a connection with a person or a place or an idea. And in this case, it was Maya. It's either there to represent her journey as a person or it's there to represent her ideals and beliefs. And that's just something I find pretty cool. Thanks for watching.